Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A Supreme Court bombshell sends shockwaves across the country. It is a stunning reversal in American history. A leaked opinion says the court is set to strike down Roe versus Wade and leave the abortion rights debate up to individual states. At the top here at five, the fallout in the nation's capital is massive. Moments ago, Governor Whitmer just joined other governors calling on Congress to protect access to abortion. Let's get you caught up with what we know right now as we have some live pictures from D.C. there. The Supreme Court says that leaked opinion is authentic, but that draft copy is not final. The Chief Justice has launched an investigation into the leak calling it an egregious breach of trust. No comment tonight from Justice Samuel Alito, who wrote the majority opinion, saying nothing in the Constitution references abortion and no such right is protected. Mar McDonald is tracking what this means for abortion rights here in Michigan and the law banning them that dates back all the way back to 1931. And we'll get to her in just a few moments. We're going to start, though, here at 5 with Devin Skillian, who's live in Washington, D.C. And Devin, that opinion wasn't expected to come down until next month at the earliest. You are so right. Uh, Jason and Kimberly, the normally reliable plumbing in the building behind me has sprung a serious leak. I think the phrase bombshell report is often so overused, but how else to describe the report from Politico last night on the ruminations over an abortion decision here at the Supreme Court. And this city, dare I say the whole country, has been pushing for it or against it ever since. There's nothing new about protesters at the Supreme Court. In fact, nothing new about abortion protesters at the Supreme Court. But there was a new shot of adrenaline to the proceedings after the nearly unprecedented leak of a draft opinion that could portend the collapse of Roe versus Wade. It concerns me a great deal that we're going to, after 50 years, decide a woman does not have a right to choose. The mental limits of the Supreme Court decision in case. Across the street from the Supreme Court, the U.S. House was not in session, but the news quickly rocketed back to congressional districts, state houses, and governor's mansions all over the country. I just caution every everyone, um, the official ruling hasn't come down yet. Um, and, and what we're hearing now is, you know, nothing but rumors. So although I'm cautiously optimistic, obviously I'm pro-life, um, I'm not counting my chickens before they're hatched. This is outrageous. Uh, women deserve and have a right to reproductive freedom, and we need to continue to fight uh, for that uh, freedom, and we will. Before coming home to Detroit, journalist Stephen Henderson spent years covering the Supreme Court. The audacity of the leak astonishes him, but he believes the leak came with a very direct purpose. This comes from a justice. This comes from somebody who is trying to affect the outcome uh, of, of this in one way or another. And, and I think that is what has Chief Justice Roberts deeply concerned about the, the, the institutional respect and credibility of the court. When they are talking about these cases and what they're going to do, it's the nine of them. There isn't this outside influence, uh, and at least not in an overt way. Now, Chief Justice Stephen Roberts is urging us all to remember that this is nothing close to a final decision yet. But if it is, uh, we would expect that about 26 of the United States would lose the right to an abortion, and that includes the state of Michigan. So let's move to Lansing now, where Mara McDonald, I imagine the issue is as hot there as it is here. Hi, Devin, you're right. As you look behind me here at the Capitol, Planned Parenthood is gathering signatures right now to place the abortion issue on the ballot in November. It is one of two moves going on simultaneously. Let me show you. If Roe is overturned, Michigan reverts back to a 1931 law in the books, which criminalizes abortion and calls for jail time, with one exception, if it saves the life of the mother. The question then becomes, is it only doctors who face prosecution or women who self-abort? People have abortions for, for all kinds of reasons, and many of them are medically necessary. But I think that this will have the kind of shilling effect that doctors just simply will not perform this procedure really under any set of circumstances because 
They don't want to get dragged in the court. Nessel is already on record saying she will not defend in court that 1931 law. Just last month, Governor Whitmer filed suit asking the Michigan Supreme Court to intervene and rule that 1931 law is unconstitutional. The law from 1931 is a little bit ar archaic. It uses terminology that we don't use today. And so I think there is actually a decent shot of challenging it before our Michigan State Supreme Court where there is a majority of members who are progressive, uh, selected by the conventions of the Democratic Party. In a separate lawsuit, Planned Parenthood is also suing to block the 1931 law. That group, along with the ACLU, is currently working to gather 425,000 valid signatures to put abortion on the ballot in Michigan in November. Preliminary word from Planned Parenthood is signature gathering is on track. Back here live, signature gathering is ongoing as we speak. And in speaking with the attorney general, her stance is this. She finds the leak to be shocking and surprising. She finds the guts of that draft opinion to not be shocking in the least. We're live in Lansing tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Hey, Maura, thank you. And our coverage of this story will continue over this next 90 minutes of news and over on ClickOnDetroit.com. There you can find a breakdown on what the future may hold for Michigan's abortion law. And you'll want to take a look at Devin's blog on how this could serve as a driver for people to head to the polls this fall. And be sure to stay with us at 530. Devin is talking to former U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid about the wide ranging impact of this decision and why the actual leak of the opinion is raising a lot of questions. And ahead on NBC Nightly News at 630, Stephanie Gosk reports on the personal, intense and emotional reaction from both sides of the abortion divide. You'll hear from women in Mississippi where the case originated. That's coming up right after Local 4 News at 6. OK, our other top story tonight is the weather and Storm Tracker 4 has been active with rain moving through pretty much all day long. Yeah, tonight's Tigers game, by the way, already rained out. And for folks who have to go outside uh, and you get caught in this, it's pretty miserable. Yeah, so let's get over to Andrew for an update on when this is all going to move out, Andrew. Well, Kimberly and Jason, it is moving out as we speak. Now, not entirely. It's just becoming more scattered and a bit lighter. You can see that in the areas of light green you see here from northern Macomb County into north northeastern uh, Oak Oakland County and down toward the Novi area and places like Franklin and West Bloomfield. You can see that here across 696 as well. Now remember, even if it may have stopped raining in your area, it is still wet on area roads, so still be careful driving and walking. Thunderstorm activity limited down to our south across northwest Ohio. I think it pretty much stays there. There might be a brief thunderstorm that uh, gets closer to the Ohio border for Lenawee and Monroe counties within the next couple of hours. After that, it gets drier, certainly after midnight. Currently, it's 52 degrees. As you can see, it's tough to see the skyline, too tough to see out your car window. So we have wet conditions still, even if it stops raining, and it's tough to see, so be careful navigating on the roads this evening. We'll talk about how chilly it gets tonight, whether the sun comes back for tomorrow, and your week's forecast coming up. All right, Andrew. Federal prosecutors say they have uncovered a new corruption scandal here in Metro Detroit. This one involves two Wayne County employees. Agents raided this home in West Bloomfield this morning as part of the investigation into an elaborate scheme involving hundreds of generators. So let's get Sean Lay. He's live at federal court tonight where both men made their first appearance in court, Sean. And spoke to the attorney of one of these road workers for Wayne County. He says he's innocent of all charges. Can't wait to get to court, he says. Another one of the employees tells me personally no comment, doesn't want to talk about the case. And take a look. One Wayne County official says the entire case, he calls it outrageous. The sad thing is, if in fact this is true, we got no place in the county for people like this. That's the reaction from Wayne County Commissioner Ray Basham about this. We got to get your side, Mr. Gunn. Can you talk to us about it? One word. No comment. No comment? Anything to say at all? Wayne County employee Kevin Gunn and John Gibson arrested and hauled into federal court today for allegedly using federal road repair funds, taxpayer money, to buy nearly 600 high-priced generators, sell them, and allegedly keep the cash. How much cash? $1.7 million in cash. There's a message there that we need to adequately staff these different departments and, and, and have checks and balances. Kevin Gunn was a celebrated employee by Wayne County who called him a man of integrity, nicknaming him Mr. Clutch for the way he handled the Gross Eel Bridge project. The FBI says 
Gibson and Gunn got local vendors to allegedly falsify their invoices. Vendors putting their county contracts at risk in order for Gibson and Gunn to buy generators and allegedly sell them for cash. But only Gibson and Gunn are charged. Where are the vendors? The allegation was they falsified reports. The vendors need to be charged. If, they, if, if frauds were committed against the citizens of Wayne County, then everybody who's involved in fraud against the citizens of Wayne County need to be charged and brought forth on this case. My clan maintains his innocence. Back here live, we did ask Wayne County uh, Executive Warren Evans for an interview today. He declined. He did send me a statement saying immediate termination is expected based upon the gravity of the offenses for both employees where he just showed you. Uh, both will are out tonight on $10,000 bond. Back to you. Hey, Sean, you know, it is a very good question. The vendors, what about the vendors? Are they in any trouble over all of this? Right now, they're not in the federal FBI complaint that was filed here just today. I asked Ray Basham, who you saw there, Wayne County Commissioner. He wants to know who the vendors are. Mm -hmm. He's determined to find out, and we'll be following up as well. Yeah, a lot more to come on this. Okay, Sean, thank you. We are used to seeing freighters out in the Detroit River all the time, but this was different. Yeah, new tonight, what this huge cruise ship was doing in town that had folks from all over town coming to check it out. Doc. Omicron variants are still circulating in southeast Michigan, but a local lab says they are seeing signs we're turning the corner. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge ahead, what they're seeing and what it could mean for the months ahead. But first, a major pledge that's going to help keep Detroiters in their homes. We'll have that story coming up next.